actually it was 16 days to be exact. Um, I was doing some of my regular unpaid Uber work, driving my kids around. <laughs> and I picked up my son and daughter from summer camp and was taking them on to church. My son had Boy Scout and my daughter, she had Bible study along with me. And we came upon this pretty heated and involved protest. You see, I live in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And the location where Alton Sterling was killed is actually walking distance from my church. Mm -hmm. So here we are trying to go to church and we come upon this scene. And I can't tell y'all how much this shook me. Mm -hmm. Maybe because I was in the midst of all of that and I could feel the energy. But I think the real reason why it hurt or touched and hurt me so much is because I have a son. I have an 11 year old beautiful black boy who's already wearing a size nine men's shoe. <laughs> and I just got to thinking that my son, as he is growing up, as I see his shoulders becoming more broad, as I see him growing up in height and his voice going down, as his manhood is starting to emerge, it just shakes me to know that his manhood, because it's combined with a high concentration of melanin, means that to some, he's already a threat. My son who loves God so much mm -hmm. and who is one who stands up for righteousness, he's the kid that gets on the other kids in class when they disrespect the, the teacher. The one who wants things to be right and who has a heart for it, the disinherited. He looked at what's going on and he said, Mama, what are we gonna do about it? Mm -hmm. I was shaken because the next day, we got woke to the news that yet another black man was killed. And I thought about how I have to tell my son who has this righteous indignation quelling up in him, how he has to sit on what is necessarily right. If he's being treated unfairly, he has to sit on that. He has to calm himself. He has to shut down part of who he is just so that he can live another day. Y'all, I have to tell you, and when I was talking to him and trying to get him to understand my point, yes, you want to stand up and you want to say, no, mama needs you to calm down. I had to put myself into his mindset where he's trying to make sense of that you can't in this way stand up for right. And the only way I could do it, y'all, was when I put myself figuratively in his shoes. A young man that has that energy and that vibrancy and try to understand so that I could get some words that he could understand. Y'all, but you know what gets worse. Then comes Friday. And there's the mm -hmm. senseless ambush of police officers in Dallas. Let's go on a couple of other days. In Baton Rouge, I'm driving to Sunday school that next Sunday, mm -hmm. just a couple of days ago, and the police are diverting us. I drive past the Be Quick where those officers were shot down. I drive past it every single week. Mm -hmm. Time after time after time, we're seeing all of these divisions. And I have to tell y'all, I was feeling some kind of way. <laughs> I was feeling some kind of way, but when I was standing in Sunday school and got the news that that diversion that I saw was because police had been killed, the Holy Spirit said, Maddie, put on another shoe. He said, you know what? Think about that police officer who has to suit up every day. Or think about that police officer's wife who doesn't know if their husband is going to come home. See, what happens is when we only see things from our perspective, from our history, or maybe our hurt, we sometimes dig these heels into the ground and we just have our way and then differences change into divisions. And the divisions turn into by diversions that truly just keep us from the true issue. The true issue is a heart thing. It's a mind thing. It's a soul thing. What I was reminded is that when we step into someone else's shoes, when we see it from their perspective, we're actually mirroring what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. Our Lord and Savior, he stepped not into shoes, but he stepped into flesh. He enwrapped his deity and humanity, not so that he could know our experiences, because he knows all, but I believe he did it as an example for us. So this is the difference that is causing a division in my life. What is it in yours? What shoes do you, when you kick off your shoes, whose shoes do you need to step into mm. so that we can start to have some caring and some compassion and that compassion can lead to communication and the communication can lead to collaboration and we can fix in this world some of the things that are broken.